So we now move on to the topic of the environment and the role that clean energy can play in securing a safer future for the planet. We're going to start the conversation with a very important part of that, and that is cars. Transport makes up 30% of the global carbon emissions, and we all know that as emissions go up, global warming accelerates. So our next councillor is the president and CEO of Audi for America. Now, you all know the mobility industry is seeing unprecedented changes. From driverless cars to emission-free vehicles, as one of the world's biggest selling luxury automobile brands, Audi is facing unprecedented challenges for the future. So to tell you more about the innovation at Audi addressing those challenges which affect all of us, because as David said, there are cars everywhere. Here's the CEO of Audi in the Americas, Scott Keogh. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to be here at One Young World. And uh, obviously, since it's my first time, if I learned anything uh, last night, it was sort of rallying people around your cause. So obviously, you can hear from my accent. I was born in New York. I live in Washington, D.C. So maybe a little bit from the U.S. contingent if you're here. Hopefully, a little bit. Very good. A little bit. Uh, as you can tell by my last name, a difficult one to pronounce. Uh, of course, it's uh, Keo, and we've uh, got to New York because my grandmother came alone on a boat from Ireland with one suitcase, which we still have, and uh, that's how we got here. So I think Ireland is here, I hope. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> and then, of course, as you figured out from Audi, I work for a German car company, and of course, being from a company from Germany, I assume there's a lot of Audi fans, uh, Germany, and of course, the Audi contingent here, so maybe a little bit then. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now, all of that being said, of course, just a little bit about me uh, is, of course, my heart in many regards has been uh, in Latin America uh, throughout my life. Sort of a journey from north to south, but as you can see in uh, San Miguel de Allende in Mexico is where I was married to my wife, who is here somewhere uh, 10 years ago. As you can see there in uh, Managua, Nicaragua, is where my godmother and my aunt worked for social justice for uh, 30 years in that country in the 70s and introduced me to Central America and the politics there. Uh, of course, she dedicated her life and she is in a uh, cemetery in uh, Chalatenango, uh, El Salvador today, where we go down to visit her uh, every number of years. Of course, later in life, I lived in Quito, Ecuador in my junior year and studied there. And then, of course, I went to a beautiful city, uh, Cochabamba, Bolivia, where I lived for a year and worked on projects. And uh, to be here now, fast forward, into uh, Bogota, Colombia has a very big impression on me, and it's uh, very proud to be here. And uh, me encanta los países de América Latina, y gracias a Bogota para un evento, gran evento perfecto. Gracias, gracias. So, with that being said, of course, that shot was taken around 25, 27 years ago, and like many people who come to Latin America, you have to work your way to Cusco, and of course, you have to work your way up to Machu Picchu. And I think, uh, obviously, there's a thousand things you can say about Machu Picchu and the engineering and just how impressive it is. But for me, when I came over the mountain and looked down, this absolute sense of wonder, awe, and of course, this sense of innovation. And innovation is really where I want to anchor all of my thoughts, because if you think about it, that is innovation that lasted over 600 years. 600 years later, you still look at it and you're absolutely blown away. And I think it's incumbent upon us, are we doing things today that are going to cause awe and wonder 600 years later? I doubt it in many regards, but I think this is where we need to be thinking. And of course, this level of innovation, whether it's the light bulb, whether it's the iPhone, which we lit up last night in the plaza, or of course, the printing press really drives the human spirit. And I think if you look at Audi and what we try to do, yes, we're a car company, but we really try to be an innovation company, really grasping for ideas. And we have no more and no more complicated time to get these ideas out there. Now, this gentleman here, many of you might not recognize and might not know, but he, of course, is August Horch, and he is the founder of Audi. And the reason I reference this is for two things. One, he was an absolute rebel. And I know he doesn't look like it in that photo, but uh, he founded his own core company. It makes sense, Hork Automotive. He wanted to develop great technology, do really cool things. 
He did that. They were making great cars. They went on. But of course, unfortunately, he had a board of directors, and the board of directors said, enough of that craziness, enough innovation. We're not big fans. Let's make some simple cars. Let's make money and stop all this innovating. And by the way, we've got two more pieces of news for you. One, we're kicking you out of the company. Two, we're keeping your name. So there he was without his name, the company, and he had to go do something. So he did do something. He founded another car company. But of course, he was someone who had a twinkle in the eye, and that's how he got our name. Horch in German means to listen. Of course, Audi in Latin means to listen. So he created that direct competitor over 100 years ago. And ever since then, we've been pushing for innovation. You can see it here in Quattro, first company with all-wheel drive, using aluminum instead of LED lights. And of course, Google Earth was in our cars before it was in any cell phones. This is the innovation that we've been pushing. But of course, the concept of this speech is the innovation of what's needed to drive society, to drive the environment, to drive the challenges, is going to go far beyond anything we've ever done in our past 100 years. In my mind, these are the three staggering innovations that are going to drive your future and the future that you are going to drive. First and foremost, I do believe the internal combustion engine will dramatically start to be replaced by the battery and clean electric power. This moment is here. We're on the tipping point, and it is a heck of an opportunity for all of us. The second one, which seems completely crazy, but I've seen crazy. I've been on a racetrack going 170 miles per hour with nobody behind the wheel. The concept of autonomous cars is here. It's coming. And whether they're semi-piloted or level five fully autonomous, they're coming. And of course, digital mobility whether it's companies like Uber and Lyft or subscription models that completely change what it means to typically own a car. These are the technologies that are at your fingertips. These are the innovations that can drive the change and give us what we need as a company to move forward more sustainably. Now, the reason I know this, and you all know the facts, battery, power, and density, and its cost is going down dramatically. 500, 600 miles of range will not be far away. Sensors cost down by 1,000%. They're getting smaller, and they're going to be everywhere. And really, the timing couldn't be more radically necessary than it is right now. Two major facts. Nine billion people on the planet in 2040. It took us 160, 180 years for the population to increase 2 billion people. Now it's happening in 30. The jump to 11 will probably happen in 10 to 15. This is staggering. Of course, what all this leads to is more cars on the road. 1.3 billion vehicles on the road today, 2 billion by 2040, and those are conservative estimates. That is an awful lot of vehicles, an awful lot of congestion, an awful lot of pollution for the environment that absolutely needs to be managed immediately, without a doubt. So this is why when we look at innovation at Audi, it's not a business thing that says, okay, we need to sell something more, or we need to plot something, we need to market something. Innovation is an absolute urgent, urgent responsibility for us as a company. And in my mind, there's really four straightforward reasons why this couldn't be any clearer. First and foremost, without a doubt, piloted and autonomous driving can lead to dramatically safer roads. It's an absolute tragedy. 1.25 million people lose their lives around the globe in automobile accidents. This is a breathtaking number. Teens in Western society, the number one cause of death for teens is automobiles. If you also look at the people who are left in extreme isolation, as you enter the later years in your life, why would you want to be cut off from family, cut off from society? Because you can't drive. And of course, at least a billion, no access to basic water medical needs. I believe strongly this is what autonomous and piloted can do. 90% of all accidents are caused by human error or human distraction. This is unacceptable. We have technology that can solve this. We need to press this technology and bring it to the marketplace collectively as soon as possible. Audi, of course, is working on this. We will be the first with level three. We will be the first with fully autonomous cars. We believe 100% from a safety point of view, it's the right thing to do. Now, beyond safety, as you all know very clearly, is the environment. And these numbers are quite staggering. The large countries, as we know, produce 60% of the CO2 emissions. The automotive industry, those 1.2, 1.3 billion cars, plus all the trucks, 
75% of the CO2. And of course, countries are expanding. More populations, you need more roads, you need to pave more roads. Why do you pave roads? Because you have more cars on the roads. This put more cars out there. And of course, more and more oil consumption. If this isn't nipped in the bud soon, these numbers will start to multiply to have staggering effects on the environment. Now, of course, this is a small number. I just mentioned there's 1.3 billion cars on the road. But yes, the steps are starting to happen. But I think this is going to be a multiplier when the consumer tips and see what's available with a battery electric car, 6,000 to a million, I believe this is going to scale exponentially. As Audi, we've made a commitment today that we will sell at least 35% of our total mix, potentially significantly higher in full battery electric vehicles. This is something we're working on daily, something that we're pushing on, something our best engineers are on, and something that the climate is screaming for, but consumers are screaming for as well. And finally, you see this quite clearly, it makes economic sense. Look at the amount of mega cities, and certainly Bogota here will most likely be one by 2040. But you know, a lot of people say, what does it take to grow the economy? What does it take to grow GDP? And frankly, it's quite a simple number. You want more people employed, so more employment is a good thing. The second thing is you want those people to be as productive as possible. That is what drives GDP. It is impossible to be productive if you are spending 17 hours a year searching for a parking space, if you spend 40 hours a year stuck in traffic. This is somebody who's not seeing their kids, a father that's not seeing his wife, someone who's not seeing their parents, someone who could be at work being active, exposed into the grind of traffic. And this has, by my estimate, at least a 4% impact on GDP. Here in Colombia, that's $11 billion. That's $11 billion lost in people rotting and sitting in traffic. So these are the issues that we need to look out for. But the one I always focus on, of course, without a doubt, is you don't want to lose a sense of magic. And I'll give you a little bit of this, because this photo has been used many times. And a lot of people say, that is never going to happen. I don't believe cars will dry themselves. I think electric is only going to be for rich people in Silicon Valley. That's not going to spread across the globe. I don't believe it's going to happen. This tip is never going to take place. This is a photo, uh, Easter, Fifth Avenue, New York City, 1900, as you can see, all horse and carriages, one automobile in that photo, one. 13 years later, there's one horse and carriage. Every other thing there is an automobile. So I have no doubts this transformation will 100% come. I also have no doubts there will be doubters everywhere. Prestigious publication at the time, 1903, told Americans, if the human moves more than 10 or 11 miles per hour, if a human moves faster than a horse, you're going to get this thing called automotive face, and a more form of insanity will take over. Clearly, that person didn't have vision of people going to the moon, airplanes, rocket ships, and everything that's been happening. I believe firmly humans are made to move dramatically faster than uh, 11 or 10 miles per hour. Because when I think of the automotive face and the dream that we should have is I do believe mobility is inherently optimistic. I think it's become less optimistic with traffic and congestion and everything else. But at the end of the day, when you get that power of a license and you can go see friends, go experience things, open up new worlds, this is the power. And if we can do it responsibly, do it cleanly, do it the way it is intended to be, I have no doubts we will have tremendous success. Now, to flip the tables a little bit, we certainly put a lot on the backs of our 85,000, 86,000 employees to innovate and do things, but a lot of people say, what, there's only 10 or 12 automobile brands out there for the most part, global ones. Uh, there's only seven or eight, nine companies that actually, countries that actually make automobiles and have the engineering. So this really doesn't involve me. I don't live in those countries. I'm not an engineer in those companies. It can't have any impact on me. Or wouldn't this be the government's job to take this and over? But the truth is, if you look at much of the major innovation in the automotive business, it's come from individuals. Individuals who had a different idea, had the power of software, had the power of programming, had the power of an idea. They weren't in giant corporations. And rapidly, regardless of their business principles, 40 million monthly users on Uber is profound. 50 million in Waze is profound. These are individuals who had a different idea in a different way 
of doing things. Now at Audi, as I've referenced, that's exactly what we want. We are fanatical about driving these changes. We will drive these changes, but honestly, these changes will not happen unless we can get you to participate. Whether you want to compete against us, because we love competition, that drives the market better. Whether you want to join us, whether you want to bring us the maddest, craziest ideas, we want it. Because I find the truth is this. My generation and the generations before me basically inherited the automobile, all of its principles. Yes, it went faster. Yes, it's safer. Yes, it's dramatically better. And we really morphed society around the automobile. Built highways rider, built underpasses, built overpasses, built tunnels, built bridges, built double wide tunnels, on and on and on to brace the world around the automobile. Now, the challenges you have on the environment, on the economy, on congestion are profound. But the technologies available to you have never been seen in the history of the world. Being autonomous, being electric, this concept of digitization gives you, honestly, the tools not to force the car to morph around society. You can change that very equation. So mobility is focused around society, is focused around families, is focused around needs. That's what we're striving to do at Audi. And I ask you very clearly, don't sit back for another government-funded public work project that takes 30 years and costs trillions of dollars. Don't sit back and say someone else is going to handle this. No, this impacts you profoundly. And when you have that idea, when you have that ball of craziness, whatever it may be, remember back to 100 years ago, Audi was made to listen. I'm listening. Our engineers are listening. Our entire company is listening. Bring us great, great stuff, and let's go change the world. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Cheers. Thank you. My pleasure. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.